EAA Chapter 166 in Hartford, Connecticut, home of the Vans RV12 build, and it's another build night here at the RV12 construction hangar. You know, a cool feature of the RV12 is the removable wings, and that comes in handy for more storage options. Maybe you keep the airplane in a multi-airplane hangar, or if you want to load the airplane onto a trailer, truck it across the country, you can do it by pulling the wings off and easily putting them back on when you're ready to fly again. It's a two-person job, and if you know what you're doing, you could have the wings on and off in maybe 10, 15 minutes. But the initial fit of the wing and the control surfaces isn't exactly a slap-and-go procedure in the build process. And of course, with a 27-foot wingspan, putting the wings on the airplane sort of changes the dynamic of a tight workspace. To help sort it all out, let's go find project lead Rick Montero. Major milestone in the RV-12 project, we've got wings on the airplane, and uh, as cool as that is, it kind of creates some challenges. There's more to it than just putting the wings on initially. There's some uh, uh, checking of gaps and such, right? It definitely is a, it's a major milestone for our uh, build project here in, <clears throat> with our EAA chapter. Um, so just a few days ago, as you, you know, we brought the wings over from uh, Another location on the uh, the airport. We had them stored at uh, in a T hangar because they had already been assembled by uh, the students of the uh, Aerospace Academy of uh, Engineering. The students had already finished them. We had them stored, and now that we were ready to bring them in and mount them, uh, we brought them over. And uh, they fit perfectly, so I got to really give a shout out to the, the students at the school. They uh, did a nice job of assembling these wings. Uh, because we, we didn't have room to uh, actually maneuver the wing around the fuselage, uh, we had to go underneath it. So you can see we have the uh, fuselage mounted on some sawhorses and a table. And we had enough space between the sawhorses that we just used a furniture dolly to take the uh, left wing and roll it underneath the fuselage to get it into its new position so that we could then mount it. And uh, mounting it was actually very simple. It only took two people to lift it and then slide it into place. And because of the good work done by the uh, students at the uh, Academy of Aerospace and Engineering, it slid right in perfectly. Um, so what we could do next is actually show you how the wing uh, is pinned in place once it gets uh, slid in into the fuselage. So all you do, you have one person next to the fuselage holding the spar, the other one on the other end holding the wing by the handle, and uh, you slide it in. There's a couple of slots on the fuselage that uh, take the spars, and uh, as you can see here, this is the left spar for the left wing, and then behind it um, is the uh, spar for the right wing. Once you get a wing into position, you line up the holes. There's a couple of holes on the, the spar that uh, line up with these bushings. And uh, these are the pins that actually hold the spars in place. So these pins slide out. <clears throat> and uh, you know you put the spar in, slide the pin in, and that locks it in place. And you have two of them, you know, one on the left and one on the right. So you have two pins holding both wings, um, the spars of both wings in place. And uh, you know, once you've done it a couple of times, it, it takes just a few minutes to, uh, to install or remove a wing. Now that we have the wing in position against the fuselage, the next step that we have to perform is to uh, set the gap between the skin on the wing and the uh, side skins on the fuselage. Um, the drawing calls out a 3 16 inch gap. So we've measured that gap and uh, used a pen to mark it. And so what we have to do now is pull the wing back. Um, we may have to take it all the way off. Uh, we'll, we'll figure that out. 
but uh, next is to trim the skin on the wing so that we have that proper 3 16 gap. And that gap is needed so that we can get the seal that goes in between the fuselage skin and the wing skin into that position. So that's going to be what the uh, build crew works on tonight. Also have to mount the flapper on. And the flapper on is essentially a combination flap and aileron. And um, so it does a, has a dual function. So it has uh, three positions that you have to bolt the flapper on in place. So one at the outboard, one in the middle, and one uh, inboard. And um, part of what we have to do is uh, set the gap on the flapper on. And the instructions tell you to uh, essentially actuate, you know, so that you have full range and make sure that you still have that 3 16 inch gap between the skin on the flapper on and the fuselage. And so what we're going to do is uh, we're actually going to wait on trimming um, the skin until we actually have the um, you know, the control rod connected to the flapper on so that we know exactly how much motion there's going to be up and down and when the, uh, the uh, flaps are extended as well. And we want to make sure that we have clearance between the skin on the flapper on and the fuselage um, in all positions and we have full range of motion with a 3 16 inch gap. From our workspace here at uh, Hartford Jet Center in Hartford, we occupy a back corner of the hangar. And uh, you know, what some builders may not realize is that when a project starts, you got a bunch of pieces all over the floor, and then as the airplane starts to come together, now you got a whole airplane sitting in your workspace. So what have we done here at, in, uh, in our space? We had the back corner of this hangar uh, it was essentially donated to us to use uh, so we could build our RB12. And um, what we had done was built a fence around the area so that we could, uh, you know, just keep our stuff protected. And it worked well. Uh, the space that we had uh, worked well until we got the wings on. Um, so in getting the wings on, we had to reposition the fuselage and actually take down some of the fencing so that uh, we could get the wings in, number one, and then once the wings are on, you can see that the right wing extends through where the original fencing was. So, um, yeah, you really do have to do a lot of planning um, in terms of your workspace, because when you first start out, like you said, you don't need much space when you're just working on the tail cone or the fuselage, but uh, once you get the wings on, then you're, the space required really grows quite a bit. We've had to uh, rearrange our space. We've had to actually move a lot of our workbenches and tables outside uh, into the hallway and uh, reposition our, some of the workbenches that we still have in the area. And we're still reconfiguring. We've, we've got to figure out exactly what the best configuration for our workspace is so it's um, you know something that we're going to continue to work on over the next week or two until we figure out what the optimal arrangement is well speaking of work what comes next yeah well as i said before we have to uh, trim the wings uh, where they meet meet up with the fuselage but and then uh, do the same for the flaperons. But once that's done, the next section is actually installing some of the wiring harness. And then after that, it's actually putting the controls in and control linkages to connect up to the uh, flaperons. So that'll be uh, the work that's uh, in front of us here for the next uh, few weeks. Cool. Well, we'll see you next time. And if you like our coverage of the RV-12 build, hit the thumbs up button down below. And thanks a lot for watching. You see what happens when you build an airplane? You ruin your clothes. Somebody's getting a bill.